Like, welcome to the Physical Oceanography Lab. My name is Tanya Novak. This is a demonstration on turbidity currents in the ocean. This is mud from um, Monterey Bay, the bottom, the very bottom, the sea floor. We got it a couple weeks ago when we went out on a cruise. And with this demonstration, we're going to try and mimic what happens out there in the bay on the bottom when you have sometimes an earthquake or, or um, things that um, set off displacements in the, in the seafloor and they cause um, these things we call turbidity currents to flow and they're similar to avalanches on land. Sediment buildup over time reaches a certain breaking point and, and dislodges and, and can flow down the slope. So. Now we're going to watch how this develops and, and try to note how fast it goes. And the speed at which um, these currents flow is dependent on a few different things. One, the density difference between the sediment slurry and the surrounding water, and also the slope angle that it's traveling against. So let's go ahead and set this off. We're going to imagine an earthquake <coughs> occurring, setting off this flow. Yeah. It's these beautiful billows. <laughs> and it's really interesting as these flows um, occur down the slope, the sediment um, drops out and settles along the way, and the coarser sediments tend to, tend to be deposited farther up the slope, and the finer ones travel, um, travel farther. So we can kind of track these flows throughout the stratigraphy of the, of the sediment record um, by seeing, you know, you see coarser sediments uh, um, and finer on top and you can, you can kind of track how different um, flows have occurred and, and the transformation of the canyon, how its shape evolves from these flows. These currents can travel really far, up to 100 miles even or 100 kilometers, um, depending on how big the displacement is, obviously, and what types of sediments are in there. Yeah. What do you think could cause the deep water to be denser than the surface water? Temperature? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's um, you know, if you cool water near the surface, it's going to sink down, and anything that's warmer will stay at the top, and the sunlight is warming the surface water. So they stay there at the top, and the, the ocean really does organize itself like that. And so, although it doesn't have layers that are quite as strong as this, it really is organized into layers, and they can support these big fluctuations along what we see kind of this interface between the blue water and the yellowy oil. We have waves that are supported along interfaces between cold water and warm water. We call them internal waves. Our physical oceanographer is looking at waves that travel under the surface and impart energy to the coastal zone. And what's cool about them, um, a lot of them are caused by tides. And you know the tide here along the coast, it goes up and down, you know, a couple feet every day. But you see how big the sloshing can be compared down in those big uh, interface sloshing? In the deep ocean, it's kind of like that too, because although the tides at the surface that we see at the coast only go up and down a couple feet every day, down in the deep ocean, we can have these waves go up and down 200, 300 meters at a time over about 12 hours. And that's, you know, 300 to 1,000 feet. So you can imagine if you're a passive, can't swim like a jellyfish, and that you live in a certain level in the ocean, and then one of these comes along, you go up, a thousand feet from where you are and then back down and that's a really pretty fundamental difference that you know people didn't really know about that until we really started looking into what's going on in the deep ocean so these are mostly just fun to look at and play with but they also demonstrate a really fundamental aspect of the dynamics of the ocean so.